I like dance music. That's not to say that I don't like rock music. I play bass guitar, man, in a jazz punk band. I bet I play banging techno and hard house and acid trance. Techno records turn up on time, aren't shit faced in the bar, aren't there because the girlfriend says they can be. Give them a wipe and they usually just do it. You know what I mean? Bands are awkward and hard work. That hat in the shades, man, it looks really good. Welcome to the centre of the fucking planet! Uh, we got married here Thursday night. In the garden. Yeah, in the garden. We got married those UV fairies with uh, fairies in attendance and got married by fairies. Who, uh, who did the service? Uh, it was a good friend of ours, uh, a priestess called Malinka. Oh, the glare, yeah, every year, every single year. Uh, for me, uh, sun's great, music's great, loved it last year. When this festival started, you know, we were just like jumping for joy, we couldn't believe it. Yeah, we did last year as well, and it was really good. And this year it's even better. And uh, it's still kind of one of those festivals where you have friendly faces everywhere, people helping each other out. Just, you know, everybody's happy, no trouble, you know, and it's just, it's good to see a festival like this take off, you know, it's, it's what country needed. Yeah, Blade, Blade is great. <laughs> and it's got a fairy garden. Which is also what the country needed. I love 
enough time for the people get to the motion and get into action. Cause you know Raga Twins come out again with a cross sky and everybody have to get a mention. So it's right now for the people them to just come together and feel I and I musical pleasure because Flinty Batman and Demon Raka is here again. So people run, tell your enemy and your friend. See? I know, but it's quite cold. <laughs> well, the Glade started at Glastonbury about five or six years ago, and I worked on the first one as a hole digger and fence putter upper, and just got met the family there, and then the Glade Festival kind of sprang from that, basically. We was doing, myself and Ants, the other, one of the other directors, were doing psychedelic trance festivals in, around the place, uh, South Africa mostly. And, uh, and then Mark Parsons and Luke Piper, who are uh, the other two directors, were involved at Glastonbury, so we kind of came together and uh, set this one up. Little five star, <laughs> fantastic array of caravans that we have. I think the windows from this one got nicked at Glastonbury, basically. <laughs> I, actually, I think I actually saw the bloke doing it, but I was really tired and I just couldn't. I thought, that bloke's nicking the window out of a caravan. <laughs> and I thought, no, don't be ridiculous. Why would anyone nick the window out of a caravan? I came back and now we've got a bit of foam instead. Oh, so look, no. if you can just kind of, you know, get some gloves. There's, there's some, but still, you know, yeah, okay, spacious no, accommodation. It's a fine home. You know, bijou, compact. See if you can put the bed back together. You know, just kind of make it as as unrevolting as possible. Yeah, okay. You wouldn't want to be an estate agent trying to flog that, would you? Right. I think it's just really great to see somebody that's actually, you know, taking a step forward and then putting new music out there and making it possible for people to come and play. You know? The way we put it together is we we found different production families for the different styles of music, basically. The Glade of Glastonbury was a lot of different genres on one stage spread over three days. And so what the Glade Festival was was basically taking that and exploding it out so each genre of music had its own tent or its own stage. And then we found what we consider to be some of the best promoters in the country for those particular genres. But they weren't necessarily the biggest or most commercial or the most sort of financially flash. It was more, you know, that they were respected in their scenes and they were really in touch with the, the underground of it.
then the other thing that we do at the Glade that is different is that we've got no sponsorship, we've got no corporate sponsorship. It's not commercialised. This is like festivals used to be before all of the major companies took over. When you see how they're all set up, it's done by an accountant's brain, and not with someone that's got a, a bit of a, a magical brain. Creativity, at the end of the day, is what it's all about. Is what we do is we create a we create a boundary, which is a fence within which a lot of creative people can come and express themselves, whether it's musicians playing their music or artists making their, their art, stilt walkers wandering around and doing their thing, or if it's just individuals coming as punters and every single colourful bit of clothing and every single ear piercing and tattoo and dreadlock and every single dance move and every single la laugh and the whole thing all just comes together. Festivals are all about spirit and that's what they should be. About people having a good time in spirit. And a lot of the new festivals these days are not, they're missing the point. You have to keep it, you have, you have to keep it sort of intimate as well so that you can get to know people. That, that's part of the vibe. It's like a big 3D piece of moving, ever-evolving art. Where the canvas stretches, that's what we do. And everyone that comes, comes and paints the colour onto it. Whether it's the artists or the punters, they're all as important as each other in making the, the entity that is, a, that is a music festival. You're coming to like escape the, mo the outside world of it, you know, the pressures of modern living, people living in cities, doing nine to five all the time. Don't want to be, ah, give me another this <laughs> You come to a music festival, you spend three days immersed in this different environment where people are much more open and friendly and like the, the weird and the abnormal becomes more the normal and it's... Freedom, <clears throat> freedom of time. You can lose yourself in time. <clears throat> you can lose yourself in space. Yeah, they still feel like a West Country rave, you know, that kind of rave in the forest kind of vibe. And I think that's what we're here for. Just wandering around with a smile on your dial for three days, you know, it's good fun. Yeah, this is really good to see something like that's going on, and I want to see more like it. And I think if you've got Coca-Cola or big branding splashed about all over the place, they tend to sort of anchor you back to that normal day-to-day -day thing and it kind of, you know, breaks the spell a little bit. So I think that's another factor. <laughs> No more transfusions of blood for oil. Not in our name. We 
you invade countries, bomb civilians, kill more children, letting history take its course over the graves of the nameless. Not in our names will you erode the very freedoms you have claimed to fight for. Not by our hands will we supply weapons and funding for the annihilation of families on foreign soil. Not by our mouths will we let fear silence us. Not by our hearts will we allow all people or countries to be deemed evil. Not by our will and not in our name. We pledge resistance. We pledge alliance with those who have undercome attacks for voicing opposition to the war or for the religion or ethnicity. We pledge to make common cause with the people of the world to bring about justice, freedom, and peace. Another world is possible and we pledge to make it real. I think he speaks loud and clear. <laughs> He's saying enough. But Jimi Hendrix says it's love. <laughs> so yeah, so we've got Sancho Panza, Breaks Day, a Nano Records, a Liquid Connected, an ID Spiral, and Little Big. And because they're all organisations that have got their feet on the ground a bit, they've all got good personal connections with artists, we're able to put together a lineup that's got a lot of credibility, but without really going for like big, huge superstar DJ names, it's more about artists that are really respected in their genres.
People that come here and pay their tickets know what they're in for. So they paid the money they paid it for us. And it, because it was the first sort of thing from taking it out of Glastonbury, the Glade Festival, and putting it here, and basically what it was, it was like, you know, taking all the best elements from Glastonbury and sticking it in a little private environment. And, you know, look at it, it's the second year on, and it's one of the biggest sort of dance festivals there is. You know, it's pure dance music. The team that puts the Glade together, and it's, it's, it's a lot of people, you know, and we're all, we all work together to do it. And all the different production families, you know, as I've mentioned earlier, that they, they all put a lot of love and time and effort into making it something really special. Oh, I've had a wicked time. It's really, uh, really friendly vibe. Everyone seems to be in a good mood. Everyone's really polite in the arcade. It's nice. Friendly, lovely, smiley, happy, lovely, smiley, it's not bad people. Lovely, not bad, yes. very nice. Beautiful countryside, what could you wish for more, you know, so it's really cool. When you come to a place like this, when you know you've got all this freedom and all this space and all these good people together, you can trust it yeah. and you feel safe, 100%. This feels more like Glastonbury 79. Mum can say yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. This is where she was <laughs> conceived at Glastonbury 79. And in case the camp's such a close part of the festival, it just like brings the community spirit in. So. I think it's the organisation here, I think it's the people who organise it who are obviously very kind of clued up to, to what the people need it. Uh, we're just setting up the first sound check, which is a picture of what they're meant to look like on stage, and that's a list of the channels, and I've got to work out how I'm going to do it. The bands haven't turned up yet, so problems don't start for later. No, we're all fine. We're all fine. They take a lot of pride in the way they put the festival on, and they really put a lot of effort in everything, like the decor. And everything is done really lovingly, so I think people pick up on that vibe and that makes it a great festival. And so I think as a result, the sort of people we attract to the festival have got a little bit of a different headspace because they're not just, it's like big names and that's it, it's, they know their music a bit better. So then we're getting married, which is lovely. Colours underneath her wings. Day and a half this has been uh, living with us. She hit one of the main lights and uh, being and kept awake when she won't take off, she was about I don't know, three metres in flight and then she yeah, you got to the deck again. I think still we get a different crowd of people here and they, it turns out they're just a really lovely, friendly, fluffy bunch, you know, they're, they're, they're good people.
tell Sweet Pea? Because she had a pea on her back when she was born. Let her pee. And uh, now it's turned into an home sign. Even from the first moments we were here, there was a nice cohesive feel. I think everyone was already ready for a good time and coming down with the sun coming out, everyone smiling, there's a nice contagious sort of energy getting around. It's a bit of a community spirit, I reckon. Everyone's here for one thing, which is the music. Yeah. The music and, uh, and partying and dancing and the bar. Under the sun or under the stars, just a sense of freedom. I think that's what we're here for. The wishing trees kind of feature. We just have lots of colourful pieces of paper, card, wonderful things you can write on. And then the people have just put out lots of messages up on the tree and just hung them there. Somebody had said we need more cheesecake. Somebody had said I wish to be the person I am today, not the person I was yesterday. Somebody clearly sat down for a good half an hour and I don't know where all the bits came from. All these little fluffy bits and sparkly things that made a whole envelope with a card inside. We've got the pyramid of infinite possibilities there. And every time I walked by there were just more and more pieces of artistry and expression on there, pictures, words, splurges, everything. But it just kept on growing and clearly people can get more and more interactive with that. And it's people getting their own creativity up. Arcadia, man. Pinball machine uses like a K of electric. Yeah. That's like having your kettle switched on all the time just to entertain yourself. But if you can run it on a green fuel, that's pretty cool. Now, Mr. Diesel, when he invented his first engine, ran it on peanut oil. They've known since like 1940 that we could have been running all diesel engines on green, recycled, carbon neutral, zero P10 heavy metal emissions like you get from fossil, fossil stuff. The third world should be growing crops for fuel, if that's what it takes. Petrol's just, we should never have even gone there anyway. We're using pinball machines as a way to promote biodiesel as an alternative to fossil fuel. You'll have to go in later, it's a kind of a weird kind of cacophony that we try to achieve in there. Yeah, between talking about biodiesel, the DJs, the noise of the games and Pac-Man, and all of this business, sound systems across the park. It's just... It is completely different to any other festival I've been to. It's much friendlier, 
and I don't know, just going around the shops and things, you can play with all the toy and stuff that they've got and no one really minds and everyone's friendly. Uh, I think the fact that everyone's ready to express themselves from the start, I think they're conscious of the fact that they're here, to ha they've got an open mind, they want to come and really explore themselves. And I think that is a contagious thing as well, people bouncing off each other. I can do that, I can do that, wow, paint my face today, chuck myself, I can cover it in glitter tomorrow. Yeah, I think it's a really good thing. Yeah, everyone's ready to be free spirits, free thinking in a free, free environment. I think it's great. Yeah, I like it, I like it. It's like a big free party. Everybody is just Absolutely accurate. Yes, very good. Kicking up the dust. That's a dance floor. I've, you only see dance floors like that in foreign countries. And you actually got one in England and it was rocking. <laughs> um, am I making any sense? Yesterday I got a guy and rubbed him down in coconut butter and covered his whole body in glitter and he looked like a human disco ball, that was amazing. So I'm thinking to myself, ooh, I've got to get myself a stall that's just making people human disco balls. So look out for that, 2006 Glade. <laughs> Hello, I'm Wonder Mermaids. This is my cohort of mermaids, fishing for sailors, that's what we're doing. Plenty more fish in the sea. Oh, she's taller than I am. And the tallest. She's a big mermaid. And I've got a veil now. Oh, 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 what am I taking on? Yeah, like people on stilts and pogos and, you know, the usual things like big fairy costumes, big dragons, you know, the really nice performances going on, so that was pretty good. There's a man dressed up as a baby, have you seen him? Yeah, he's got, he's got like a nappy on and a sign down his neck, and he's down there. I can't remember. Swim away Guy got down on his hands and knees on all fours and reversed into the open cash machine. <laughs> his arse into the cash machine on all fours and got stuck. <laughs> On the floor down there, they've gone now, but he, and he couldn't get out. And it took about 45 minutes on all fours with his ass in the cash machine trying to get out. Why not? Buzz him out, fuck why? like a fucking beaver and this fucking jobs boy come up to me like and he's like you're just fucking trying to know what I'm fucking bouncer and you're the blue world you're the blue world you're the blue world you're the Still feeling a bit fucking bollocks, man. Space head over here. Whoa, mate. Look at me fucking bollocks. Look at eyes here, mate.
But no, man, I mean, you know, just checking out the tanks, the vibe in them is incredible, you know, everyone's smiling. If your beats don't seem to hit your body, then yep, wander on further and see what you can find. There's something for everyone here. So far, I've come across every genre and been able to dance through everything. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. And that contagion thing comes in again because even when you wake up in the morning and the beats are thumping around you, your body's already finding itself a little groove and I think it doesn't stop all day. Yeah, it's very easy to get around. It's small, that makes it really nice. You know, you'd have to run about it. You got rock down there, you got techno, you got house, you got trance. Uh, it's just like catching for everybody and everybody to get together and, and mingle, you know what I mean? And the forest is just there. Yeah. I like the way they have trees lit up. I think they should light some more of them up. I think at night time, I think that's really, really good. Surprising things this year. Pussy parlor, okay? Uh, something very, very different. Something uh, that I was actually really surprised when I walked in, just uh, how they'd managed to put it all together. From, from uh, being something very, very small last year to being like this massive wooden construction now, incredible. Looking forward to the burlesque girls. <laughs> <laughs> Enough said, really. I think what stands out for me is just that there's no grief with the punters. There's no, there's no aggravation. Everyone's just warm, and you know we don't. There's, there's minimal uh, sort of criminal activity and stuff like that. There's almost nothing, in fact. Which for you know, eight, eight and a half, nine thousand people in the field for three days, it's, it's quite unusual, really. You know, so that's what stands out for me is just uh, the vibe. It's really good people that, that come here. You know, here it's you know it's like one goal is to have a party. So the best element of that is the music and everyone is willing to turn up and do what they want to do. You know, we create environments that if you open up to it, take you to a different dream world, as it were. You know, you sort of start thinking, wow, so this is all out there, this is possible. And people interact on different levels. All of a sudden they open up and they, you know, they connect magically. And that is in a way what it's all about, changing people's perception on a reality that otherwise can be really dull and can be creating a lot of havoc and harm. <laughs>
and uh, the public side of it is the duck floating on the surface of the pond and we're the legs underneath so you know we enjoy it in a different way you know you enjoy it by hopefully doing the job well and watching other people having it and watching your, your mates who are DJs standing in front of 5,000 people going Woo! and you know you get a different form of enjoyment but you don't really get to see much at all unfortunately so it's not just a load of sound systems in tents banging away in the field you know people spend months and months and months in preparation like thinking about the decor and the tents and you know the vibe that they're going to create so there's just you know they've, they've put a lot into it you know they're putting a lot of soul into the thing so yeah you know it's it's a it's a huge team effort and everyone does their bit and everyone's doing it with a passion because i think it's not a big commercial event you know people say they're doing it for the love of it for us it, it's the uh, it's, it's the way the sort of like the, the people are coming together right all these different types of uh, dance music, you know, there's all the different genres, but a, a festival like this, everyone's collective. It's the same type of music throughout, you know, everybody's here for the same reason. You know, there's other music festivals and, you know, it's sort of like, there's all the different types of music. People go for the music, not for the spirit of the festival. And I think what's happening here is like, you're getting down to bare essentials, you know, and everybody's realizing it's, you know, everybody's having fun. You know, and that is, that is what makes it the festival. The electronic culture for me started in England anyway, and it's quite nice to come back to that. I think the best is to come, though. Yeah.
camera are looking, bosh, bosh, bosh. This is the Glade Festival. Now you've heard of Glastonbury, you've heard of all of them, but this is the one that caters for the people that love their dance music. The chilled out people, no attitude, a lot of love, a lot of respect, and you know, give it another two or three years and Glade, everyone will be planning to get on it. There'll be buyouts, mate, buyouts. Anyway, this is Speed, Red Zone, thank you boys. I must say, big up the Biff. Biff, you know you are. You're doing this raw like thunder. And all them people that come to the Glade Festival, give it another two or three years. It's a big up like bad man cook food. Hope it's out. 